In this quick tutorial, I want to talk about something that I mentioned in my tutorial on coatings in Blender version 4.0 that's about to be released. I mentioned that the new coating revamped functionality is energy conserving as one of the benefits in it. Somebody made a comment that I could potentially have explained it better specifically by using a test called the furnace test. And that's what we're going to look at now. The furnace test is kind of a high concept test. It tests whether too much energy is leaving a surface. When we're rendering surfaces in a 3D application, we have these various BRDF layers that I mentioned in the coat tutorial. And each time energy reflects off one of those layers, it shouldn't be available to the layer below it. But Blender has been allowing that to happen, and you end up having an accumulation of too much energy on a surface because of that. But it's not just energy conservation, there's a related but a little bit less known concept called energy preservation that we're also going to take a look at. The simple scene that I have right here is such a simple scene, but it will break a render that does not have energy conservation. In the surface here, I've got a simple white background that is producing all of the illumination in the scene. It's light coming omnidirectionally, every direction hitting the surface. The sphere is the only object in the scene, and it has a white base color. Pure white, that's it. By default, we only have a diffuse component going on. We don't have specular, we don't have anything else turned on. It is simply diffuse reflecting. And when we turn on the interactive renderer, what should happen is that you don't see anything. That's the essence of the furnace test, is that your test object completely blends into the background. Here in Blender 3.6, even with only a diffuse component, Blender's failing that. A perfectly rough diffuse surface, really one of its primary characteristics is it doesn't matter so much what direction light is coming. The light that comes into it gets scattered off in all random directions, and it, it should be just flat. But Blender's diffuse function is actually producing a little bit of darkening at glancing angles. Well, I bet you didn't notice this, that roughness actually affects the diffuse component, the base color, of the principled BSDF in version 3.6 and before. So if I came down and took roughness up to 0.5, then we actually get the expected behavior of it disappearing so you don't see it. So now it's actually behaving in a properly energy-conserved way, as far as just the diffuse component goes. But if we take roughness up to one, we have exactly the opposite problem. So I honestly, I don't know what the thought is behind its behavior, but I just wanted to bring this to your attention because we're, we're going to kind of come back to this roughness thing in just a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take roughness all the way back down to zero so that we're not considering that a variable in our investigation. I have a suspicion that this behavior we're seeing here at low roughness is maybe a crude attempt at trying to do some form of energy conservation, because it looks to me like it's behaving according to the Fresnel effect. But that's, that's just the thought. I don't have any proof of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take specular and take it up to its default behavior of 0.5 that creates specular reflections that sit on top of the diffuse component, where the low end is 4% reflectivity, and it follows the Fresnel curve up to F90, the high glancing angles, where it becomes 100%. And this is what we now get. Now, it seems kind of subtle, but I want you to look at that carefully. What we see is a very slightly brighter face on area than we see in the white background, and certainly we see a little bit of the glowiness. If you watched my tutorial that I did, gosh, maybe a year ago now, on energy conservation, when I realized that Cycles was not properly energy conserving, I talked about materials or surfaces looking glowy, and this is what I was referencing, this effect right here, where we are seeing too much energy leaving the surface, especially at glancing angles. So what's happening is Cycles is taking the specular layer, the reflections, rendering them according to the Fresnel effect, and then just simply adding them on top of the energy that's already reflecting off the diffuse component. It produces a mismatch in energy, especially at glancing angles. It's, it's reflecting too much energy. It's violating the laws of physics, essentially. 
So let's take this a step further. If you remembered in my tutorial on coatings, the principled BSDF has reflectance layers that sit on top of each other. And each one of them is reflecting a certain amount of light and a certain amount of light is then progressing down to the next reflectance layer underneath it. And the amount of energy that's reflecting off that top layer at whatever incidence angle shouldn't be allowing that given amount of energy to then progress down to the layer below it. But that's exactly what's happening. So let's come down now to clear coat. Here again, we're in 3.6, and I'm going to take clear coat up to its default position of 4%. And look what happens. This gets even brighter. So the energy from clear coat is reflecting, and it's simply adding itself on top of the specular layer and then on top of the diffuse layer. Well, we can take this a step further even. Let's come over and take sheen up to a value of 4, and that also is adding energy to the equation here. So you can clearly see that Cycles is violating. It's totally failing <laughs> the furnace test. That sounds really harsh. I shouldn't be that harsh about it because the system sort of relied on the fact that you could be putting reflections on top of a surface that had a relatively dark, diffuse type of surface that if you laid extra energy on it, you may not necessarily know that there's an energy violation. But this is actually really such an important thing for realism in renderings. And if you don't have this energy conservation thing nailed down, people can look at it and say there's just something not quite right. So let's back up now. Let's go the opposite direction. I'm going to remove clear coat. I'm going to remove sheen. And we're going to remove specular. We're going to go back to this default. Well, what happens if we take this up into metallic mode? And let's, let's now talk about energy preservation. Let's come in now and take metallic all the way up the sphere disappears. This is expected behavior because the sphere, its base color is white and it's perfectly sharp. There's no roughness. And so it's perfectly reflecting the environment. We're, we're going to take note before we go on too much farther. Notice GGX right here. Keep that in the back of your mind. Let's come down to roughness now and watch what happens as I progressively increase the roughness. Notice that we can begin to see the sphere. So why would roughness begin affecting what's happening with the energy on the surface? If we look at it from a graph standpoint, it's mostly just a flat line across the top of the graph, meaning it's uniform reflectivity regardless of the incidence angle. Almost. Technically speaking, there is variance, but it is far less variance than what we see happen when we have just specular reflections. So if I take roughness up, farther and farther. Look at that. That sphere gets darker and darker to the point that we get up to 1.0. And the metallic layer, when you render it with very high roughness, it behaves like a diffuse surface. But look at that. So something's clearly wrong. Well, this is a manifestation of the GGX algorithm. The GGX algorithm is based on what's called microfacets. It's a way of simulating very, very small scale perturbances or irregularities in a surface that scatter light. It turns out that the original GGX algorithm didn't simulate a multi-bounce function on all of those little microfacets. So once the light hit one of those small microfacets, it would terminate. Well, this would cause what we call an energy preservation problem. So what a system needs to do is have the light come in, hit those microfacets, and then bounce a couple of times, as if you had light coming into a room from the outside and bouncing around on the walls. So that is what the multi-scatter GGX function does. And look at that. Isn't that interesting? Well, it turns out that this is one of the new adaptations in 4.0. 4.0 actually has a revamped multi-scatter GGX mechanism that is now set to be the default. And you should just use it all the time because it will solve this energy preservation problem. The downside of using multi-scatter GGX in 3.6 was that it was slower to render and had a tendency to produce more noise that made it less than ideal. But this would also affect very rough glass. So a brand new algorithm was put in place. So even though you may see multi-scatter GGX in 4.0, it's a brand new algorithm that is much more efficient and doesn't have the issues 
that multi-scatter GGX had in 3.6 and before. So let's come in now and take a look at transparency and see how all of this plays out with this energy preservation. So we're going to take and go back to GGX and then we're going to reset, turn off metallic, take roughness back down to zero. And now we're going to come down and we're going to make our object fully transparent refractive. It kind of disappears. Let's come over now and start making it rough. In 3.6, there are two ways of doing it. We have the general roughness parameter, but there was also a transmission roughness. And this transmission roughness no longer exists over in 4.0. So all the heavy lifting has to be done by the primary roughness function. Uh, so let's just take a look at this. Let's just take a look at what happens if we do use transmission roughness and we start taking this up. And look at this. We begin to see clearly that something wonky is kind of going on right here all the way to the point where we take this up to the very high end and uh, something something's happening well this is this is a manifestation of the ggx algorithm not properly preserving energy it's not modeling all of the complexity of the light bouncing around the micro facets on this and you get this energy problem so this is where we come over and you would use multi-scatter and boom look at that you have almost perfect energy preservation so if we come back over here and we look at taking transmission roughness down and we're going to use the general roughness function well we essentially get the same thing and this is what we will have available to us to work with in 4.0 but again if we come back over and re-invoke multi-scatter ggx we almost get it solved. I mean, it is like 90% better. So uh, no algorithm is exactly perfect, but this is a far better solution. But again, in a lot of situations, multi-scatter would be slower and apparently was prone to noise and so forth. So here we are over in Blender 4.0. Now let's take a look at it. I've, I've literally just opened it up and we're I want to bring your attention to the fact that I'm leaving it at GGX for right now, but it's now moved down under specular in case you open it up and you don't know where it's gone. We're in the default state of just white base color, a diffuse, and let's go ahead and turn the interactive renderer on and boom, perfectly white. You don't see anything. And it does not matter what you do with roughness. It is perfectly energy conserving at that diffuse level. So let's come in now and turn on the specular layer. So the specular now is down here under specular, but it's called IOR level. And the default is the equivalent of what you would do in Blender 3.6. So we're gonna put this to 0.5. So now we will have a glossy reflection layer on the surface. And look at that, nothing. It's perfectly energy balanced. And you could think, well, maybe it's not selected. Maybe it's not there, but you can see the sphere is selected right there. So let's do this. Let's come over and let's add a coat layer. We're going to take weight up to 1.0 so it has full expression and we don't get any glowiness. It is perfectly preserving the energy on these stacked BRDF layers in this environment. Now, if we come in and we take sheen, let's add sheen on top of that. Uh, let's take the weight up fully on that. Look at that. It's completely passing the uh, furnace test. Let's come in now and take a look what happens when we go into metallic mode. So you're going to note that when this file opened up, it opened up using GGX because that's how I saved it. So you could come in and start doing metallic stuff. And let's do that. Let's come in first off. Let's take everything off. Let's take sheen off. Let's take coat off. We're going to make sure that our, I'm still getting used to, <laughs> I'm still getting used to looking at this too. I'm going to take a specular all the way down. So we're just at a diffuse. Now we're going to take metallic up and we're going to bring that up. Now we need to start turning up roughness because it's a perfectly mirror ball right now. So we wouldn't expect to see anything. But as soon as we start taking the roughness up, well, now we start seeing the same thing, dang it, that we were seeing in, in Blender 3.6. Well, this is where 
we come back to multi-scatter GGX and boom, it disappears. It's now perfectly energy preserving. By default, new files have multi-scatter turned on. It doesn't suffer from performance penalty like you would get in 3.6. So it's a safe bet to have on by default all the time. So let's come in now and sort of reset everything back to the way it was. We're, we're back to just our diffuse white ball. That's all we're at. So let's come in now and turn transmission up, which now is a weight factor. Let's turn it all the way up. And it again disappears because it is just perfectly transparent and glossy. And let's come over now and turn roughness up, remembering that under specular, I've left it back to the file default of GGX. So this is something you just want to look for when you bring in older files. So let's start turning roughness up. And again, we get to that same energy preservation problem. It's losing energy as the light is scattering on the micro facets in the, in the vanilla version of GGX. So then we just come over and we take GGX and we go into multi-scatter mode. And there we go. It's not 100% perfect, but it is far better than the standard GGX. And we don't have any performance problems or the issues that the old multi-scatter GGX had. So that's why it's been turned into the default for all new files. So what we're going to do is I just want to show a couple of examples because this is all kind of dry stuff, but this energy conservation is very, very important for realism. Hopefully this makes sense. When you watched my tutorial on coat, the couple of examples that I gave about energy preservation, hopefully there's context now for understanding those. They didn't just get darker in some random way. But let's take a look at, at a couple of quick examples. All this white going on and a little bit of color. This is in 3.6, no energy conservation. So let's come in now and turn on the properly energy conserved. And you get that. It's subtle but it improves the realism of the scene. And that's incredibly important. Let's look at another example. This is another test scene that I used. When I look at it, I look at this edge and it's glowy to me. This is more of a problem that you were prone to see or apt to see on lighter colored objects. So now if we see the energy conserved version in 4.0, you get this. And I bet you weren't expecting to see the ground darken so much it's a high glancing angle relative to our line of sight. So if I turn energy conservation off and then back on, you can see a lot of energy was being put back into the scene that shouldn't have been there. In this car rendering, which I used in my tutorial on coat, we have a rendering from 3.6. It doesn't look bad, but it suffers from both energy preservation and conservation. This was rendered with GGX and it, it's got a metallic base layer and then it's got a coat on top of it. When we render it with multi-scattering GGX, we get this. And look at that, it actually lightened up a little bit. So now we actually have a little bit more of a problem because we have correct energy preservation, which lightened it up, but now we don't have correct energy conservation because we have a coat sitting on top of the metallic base layer and there should be conservation between those two layers. Now, when we bring it into 4.0, this is what you get. Look at that. Especially, do you see how this high glancing angle right there, how that darkens? That's exactly what should happen with conservation. And that's what we also see on the top of the roof. So Blender 4.0 is using the new multi-scatter GGX, which is giving you correct energy preservation. And then on top of that, it's using the correct energy conservation to reach the correct energy distribution between multiple layers across that surface. And it just looks better. Let's look at one more example. Here I've got this kitchen scene that I use for testing purposes. And this is 3.6. The camera's at a pretty high glancing angle to this white countertop, but we're also at a pretty high glancing angle to the wood here, which is glossiness. We can see the uh, reflections. And now let's turn on the 4.0 version. All I did was open it up in 4.0 and rendered. And we get this. Do you see that darkening? That was the energy conservation process taking place. And it looks a little bit more real because of that. And both of these use Filmic. I didn't use AGX because I didn't want that to confuse things. I hope you found this to be a bit of an education into why this energy conservation thing is kind of a big deal and why I'm so excited about it.